Hello everybody, my name is Nuvola and welcome to another video. Today's video is an automatic dripstone farm. And let me tell you beforehand, this farm is not the most efficient, but it does look very cool if you ask me. The material list is in the description as always, so let's head into it, let's go! Here you can see the layout of the build. We're gonna start off by placing three double chests in the floor right here. We're going to place three hoppers facing into the sides of these chests. And then we're going to dig out two blocks all around the observers and the black concrete. This is where the rail system will be. You can place a redstone block somewhere halfway on each of the sides, so in the front here as well, and one here at the side. And then place powered rail all along the side of the build, three in the front here and all along the other side as well. Then you can place normal rails over the hoppers and in the corners. And don't forget that this one needs to be one block higher actually, let me fix that. There we go. Don't forget these corners as well. Okay, so this is your collection system and you can actually get a hopper minecart going. However, first of all, we're going to place some observers at the ground level, which is why I replaced the observers you saw earlier with some grass blocks to ensure that you put them on the right level. In order to prevent the dripstone from falling and stopping the minecart, we're going to place a protective layer of cobblestone slabs above it. However, don't place a cobblestone slab right here, because it will interfere with the hopper minecart going down or up. Let me show you. That's what we don't want, so don't place a cobblestone slab right there. Don't do it on the other side as well, but you can fill in the rest. And then of course place down the observers on the side as well, we'll place 8. You can fill in the blocks behind them with some black concrete. These observers will detect when dripstone grows in front of it. And pistons that will place above them will then trigger and break the dripstone. Because it's a pretty long redstone trail, we're going to place some repeaters in between and we need glass blocks in order for the redstone signal to travel upwards. Like this. You can then place the pistons on the side and in front, and on the other side. Now when you place a block in front of the observers, all of the pistons should be triggered. Now let's actually place the dripstone. You want to place a dripstone block, one block above the pistons, like this. And you want to hang a pointed dripstone below it, but the top level should be one block higher than the piston, otherwise it's not renewable. Place one of these in front of every piston. Thank you. 
Actually, I think it's nice if you have some pointed dripstone in between here as well. Those will not be automatically harvested, but it does give a cool effect in the end. Now grab some black concrete and fill in the rest of the blocks. And don't forget to place some concrete in between the pistons and the observers as well. Final step for the functional part of the farm is to add water on top of the dripstone. This will make sure that the dripstone grows faster. Create a ring around the dripstone blocks you've placed earlier. This is what it should look like and you can go and grab a bucket of water and fill all of the spaces on top of the dripstone. Again this is to make sure that the dripstone grows faster. You can see if it worked by looking at the pointed dripstone below and see a lot more water drops falling down. That's actually it for the functional part. We're now going to work on the decoration. I'm going to show you one side of the build and I will build it layer by layer so you can easily see how I build it from the ground up. Place a layer of stone all along the side from the back to the front and end with a stair at the front. You can skip these mossy cobblestone blocks for the first layer but you can place four stone blocks at the back right here. I made them out of cobblestone just to show you the different layers. For the second layer we're also going to make our way from the back of the build to the front. But we're going to stop a little bit earlier. You want to stop right here when there are still two pistons sort of in front of the stone, if you know what I mean. You can then place five stones one block behind right here and place another layer of stone on top of the four at the back. For the third layer, we're going to place an upside down stair here because that's where we're going to place our door and again work our way towards the front. Stop right here. Then place two cobblestone in front of it with two slabs right here and right here. Place two stone right here at the back. For the fourth layer, we're also going to make our way towards the front and we're gonna stop at the same point as the layer before. Place three stone in front right here, so on top of the slab and two in front of that and place an upside down stair in front of it. For the fifth layer, we're going to make our way all the way to the front and you should now be next to the dripstone blocks. You can place two upside down stairs at the front, right here. Then place a slab right here with five blocks in front of it and two slabs in front. To finish it off, place two slabs right here. This is the jaw of the dragon skull. For the sixth layer, this is next to the water, place two stairs like this right here and two stairs in the same way a couple blocks back like this. You can then extend the stone blocks to the back and you can actually fill in the roof. We're now going to work on the eye and the nose of the build. We're gonna start with the nose. Place two pieces of black concrete right here. And then 
place black concrete on top of the water right here. Place a sea lantern or a shroom light or a frog light for example right here. And place some black concrete around it. Back towards the nose. Place a stone block on top of it with a slab right next to it. And an upside down stair right there. And then place two full blocks right here. That looks like a nose to me. Now behind it, place a full block, then a stair. Turn around, place a full block and a stair again. And now you've attached the nose to the eye. Let's work on the eye. Place a slab right here, then an upside down stair right here with a slab on top and a slab in front of it. Place a full block on top of that, one behind it, another one behind it, and another one behind it. And then you want to place a slab right here. Place a bottom half slab in front of the full block right here. Leave a two block gap and place another one. And then place two full blocks in between. I'm actually replacing them with natural stone just so that you can see the difference between the layers. That's basically it. So now all you gotta do is copy this to the other side. Good luck. Let's connect the two sides to each other. Place full blocks on the corners right here, next to the observers. And place a row of five stairs in front of it. Then on top, place three upside down stairs. Another three. And then three normal stairs on top of those. With three full blocks behind it. And an upside down stair at the side, on both sides. On top of the nose, you can place slabs and full blocks in the middle. The front of the farm is now done. Let me show you around a little bit so that you can see where everything is. And now we're going to connect it to the back. Place five blocks behind it. Then a block in the middle with two stairs next to it. And a stair to the back of it. Attach a slab to that stair and surround it with full blocks. Then you place a stair facing the back. And now you've attached the nose to the eyes. Time to finish it. Place three full blocks in the middle attached to that last stair you've placed with slabs next to it. You can actually delete the black concrete on top of the sea lantern and replace it with a row of five stone or cobblestone. And then on top place slabs in this order. Should cover up the eyes. You can then fill in the rest of the head by rounding it off and connecting it to the back of the build. For this you can use, well, a bunch of full blocks, a couple of stairs and a couple of slabs to really round it off. I deliberately didn't speed up this process because I can imagine that you want to see how every single block is placed. I hope it doesn't slow down the video too much. Once you feel confident enough and think that it's done, 
congratulations because this is actually a pretty well intermediate build i would say and to make it look a little bit overgrown we're going to replace some of the stone with mossy cobblestone or mossy stone bricks for example place some coarse dirt around hanging from the side for example place some vines and some leaves and also some moss carpet on top i will leave this up to your imagination and i will just show you the speed up process of how i did it uh, this is pretty random so don't feel obliged that you have to follow this step by step the final thing to do is to do the interior so start with a door in the back and using some spruce wood you can just easily make a small storage area where you can collect your pointed dripstone. Now as I mentioned you will lose a little bit of dripstone at the side of the build because some will be pushed out of the farm but I'm pretty sure that you will get more than enough pointed dripstone for you to work with. Anyway that's it for me I hope you enjoyed the video like if you did Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos or questions about this one. And subscribe if you want to see more. See you in the next one. Cheers!